Okay, now in this example, we're being asked to find the zeros of the polynomial function. The zeros are the values of x that will make this function evaluate to zero. In other words, we plug in this number for x and we get zero for y. That's what we mean when we're talking about the zeros of the function. Uh, luckily for us, this function is actually already written in its factored form, so we don't have to do any of the factoring like we did in um, other examples. Uh, what we can actually do is we can go ahead and create an equation here by just setting this equal to zero. So we have x plus 2 times the quantity x minus 1 times the quantity x minus 3 is equal to zero. Now that we've created this equation, we're looking for the roots of this equation. Those are the values that make this equation true. A slight technical change in the vocabulary uh, that I'm using there from zeros of the function to roots of the equation. Uh, but what we're going to do now is we're going to take advantage of the zero product property. The zero product property says that if this product of these three binomials is going to equal zero, then one or more of them must equal zero. So we will just find the values of x that make each one of these equal to zero. You might be able to look at that and think, oh, that's obvious. I already know what value makes each of those equal to zero. Me too. But I'm going to go ahead and show the work in case you need to see it. I'm going to set the first factor equal to zero. I have x plus two equals zero. In one step of algebra, I can solve that, subtract two on both sides. Now we'll get that x equals negative 2. Set the next factor equal to 0, so I have x minus 1 equals 0. Again, you may look at that and say, ah, I know it's 1, but showing the algebra behind that, go ahead and add 1 to both sides, that would cancel, and you'll have x equals 1. And then finally, set the last factor of x minus 3 equal to 0. Add 3 on both sides and you will get that x equals 3 for that. So here we have the three zeros of the function. If you wanted to test them, plug them back into the original, the product of this whole thing would become 0. Negative 2 would make this first factor equal to 0, and then 0 times whatever these are would be 0. 1 would make this middle factor equal to 0, and then 0 times whatever these two were would be equal to 0. And finally, 3 would make this last factor equal to 0, and 0 times whatever these were would also equal 0. So here we have the zeros of the function, uh, negative 2, 1, and 3. I'll give you a moment to go ahead and try this one on your own. I will post the answer, and then you can kind of evaluate uh, for yourself where you stand on this. So now let's have you take a look at this function. We have y equals x times x minus 4 times x plus 7. So take a look at that one. This first piece might give you a little bit of a struggle if you're not sure how to handle that, but it's actually easier than what we just did. Um, go ahead and try it and uh, take a look at the solution that I post to see how you did.